my name is Emily. Thank you for joining me for this full length reformer class focusing on a post COVID workout. I came down with COVID a couple weeks ago and I recently posted the Pilates mat routine that I did in recovery when I was able to start working out again. And this is the Pilates reformer routine that I came up with that I was doing to recover as well. So Please don't work out until you're able to. If at any time you feel like the workout is too much for you, please go ahead and stop. The focus on class is breathing and opening up through the front of the pecs and collarbone area. So much coughing and congestion happens right up in here. We round forward a lot. We're really trying to open that up, get a nice release, get breath back into our body and into our lungs and cleanse ourselves a little bit, right? So we're going to go ahead and begin. Just go ahead and come sitting on the side of your reformer. Squeeze your legs together if you're able to. Grab your glutes slightly. Press in through your heels. You don't have to lift your toes. Grab your ribs. Draw your abdominals up and in. Roll your shoulders up, back and down to widen and flatten your shoulder blades. Stack your shoulders over your hips. We're going to go ahead and just take a nice big inhale, leaving our ribs connected at the front, not allowing them to flare. And exhale. Draw your belly up and into your spine as you exhale and inhale. Feeling your ribs wide into the side as opposed to out. And exhale, feeling your rib cage narrow. We're going to go ahead and add our arms. We're going to inhale. And exhale to release. And inhale up. Squeezing all the air up. Let's go ahead and do two more. We're going to begin class standing at the front of the machine. I have one medium spring on. That's just one bright spring on my machine. And my foot bar is in the lowest position. We're going to keep it here all the class until the very end. And at the very end of class, we're going to go ahead and change our foot bar position and our spring tension. So, coming up, standing on the end, end of the machine, I'm going to have my feet parallel, my heels directly underneath my sit bones. I'm very close to the machine, but I'm not ever going to lean into the foot bar. Whoopsies. Move my carriage slightly. I'm going to go ahead, squeeze my glutes to open up in front of my hip flexors, step my shoulders over my hips, over my knees. I'm going to inhale up. Biceps by my ears. I'm going to dive down, keeping my biceps by my ears the whole time. I'm going to place my hands on either side of my carriage. Squeeze my glutes still. I'm going to do cat cow here. If this is too heavy for you, go ahead and lighten this for you one, one lighter spring. Inhale to press out. Pressing in to the cow position. From there, I'm going to tuck my tail, drop my head, drop my ribs towards my hips. Bring my shoulder blades flat down my back. Don't bring your shoulders up to your ears. We don't need any tension in our neck. Inhale to press out. And exhale, press back in. Feel a nice hamstring stretch as you press out. From there, we're going to stand around that position. I'm going to take my right hand. Let's do right hand. I'm going to bring it in towards the center of the machine, but not and my thumb's not going to cross the center of the machine. My left hand's going to float down towards the spring underneath. My shoulders are still square. I have a nice bend in my elbows, so my shoulders are square. I'm not pressing up so that I'm twisting. This is the beginning, guys. We're going to get a twist, though. We are going to work. I'm going to inhale. I'm going to exhale to press up. I'm going to do a twisty thread the needle, rotating my ribs, everything from my belly button up basically, ribs, shoulders, I'm going to rotate. My hips, my knees, my feet are all going to stay facing the machine. And I'm press it out. Still breathing. Still getting that nice hamstring stretch. Being equal weight on all parts of my foot, all, all parts of both of my feet. So behind the big toe, behind the baby toe, and through the heel. I'm going to press it out. Switch my hand. 
so that my left hand is going to be in towards the machine, towards the center of the machine, but my thumb is not crossing it again. So I'm not crossing my midline, putting too much pressure on that left pec. I've been nice bending my elbows so that my pectoral muscles open. Inhale it out. Get in that nice hamstring stretch, not allowing my belly to drop. Still wrapping my ribs. And exhale it back in. I'm controlling the machine. The machine's not controlling me. The articulation of my spine is pressing the here down, not my weight necessarily. And come back up. From here, let's place both hands back down, putting her biceps by her ears again. And we're going to do 55 and just do three more cat cows. Press it up. Pull it back under, tuck in your tails. Squeeze in your glutes. I have a slight bend in my elbows and push out, so my shoulders should come towards my ears again. And pull it back in. From the wrist, squeeze my glutes, float my fingers off, pressing my hips forward, raising my arms up to the ceiling, and lowering my hands down to my side. We're going to do standing footwork next. We're going to do a parallel, and then we are also going to do it turned out. So, to begin, I'm going to bring my foot, or my left foot is going to come around to this side. Because when I turn to the side to do the footwork as well, I want you to be able to see the front of my body for this. So, I have my, so the insides of my feet are splitting the center of my machine. I have five springs on my machine. So, my, the inside of my foot is splitting the center spring. I have my weight equally distributed across all parts of my foot. I have a tendency to turn out. So, my weight naturally wants to flip to the outside of my foot. I'm placing weight behind my big toe as well. So I have equal weight behind my big toe, behind my baby toe, and into my heel. The ball of my foot is on the very edge of my carriage. I say able, I'm able to go like this. Think of tendon stretch on uh, the reformer. That's where your foot would be so your heel can dip under the carriage. I'm gonna place my hands down here by the foot bar. So if I flip from one side to the other, or if I get a little off balance, I can reach down and grab my foot bar easily. I don't want to hang on to my foot bar though. So, square your hips, make sure that they're facing the carriage, and that one hip's not high. You want both hips even as well. From there, pressing the heel underneath the carriage, I'm going to press it out and pull it back in. Drawing my abdominals up and in, wrapping my ribs, widening my shoulders up, back and down. Place your hands on your hips to make sure they're even. If you're comfortable, go ahead and check on the weight on your foot and make sure that the foot that's pressing the carriage isn't leading. You want both hips to remain even the whole time. Good, let's do two more here. On this next one, we're going to stay out at the top. We're going to come to a demi point and flex. Demi point and flex. Three, four, check on your hips. Five, check on your feet. Seven, eight, check on your foot. Mine already want to turn out. Good. Drop your heel under and come back in. From there, we're going to pop our foot up to a daddy point position. Square our hips again. Make sure that your hip didn't height for the foot that's working again, for the leg that's moving. Square them off and press and pull. Again, go ahead and make sure that you have even weight on your standing leg. You're really wrapping up through the glute there. You're really going to feel this near the end of the exercises for the leg that you're standing on. Let's do two more. Don't pop it. Squeeze your glute to straighten your leg. Think of these, especially right here, because we're going to rotate to the side. We're in parallel. We're going to bring our foot to the center. So if you need to step off, you can. Or if you can hop your foot back gently, carefully, safely. Don't press off on your carriage to do it, right? We're going to bring our left foot to the front corner of the carriage. My foot is parallel. Both feet are parallel. You'll know if your foot's not parallel because it's not going to be lined up at the end of your carriage. I have the spot between my big toe and my, my pointer toe, it's called my second toe, on the carriage all the way down through my heel. From there, I'm going to press it out and pull it back. And I'm working this outside glute. Again, I'm making sure my abdominals are up and in. My ribs are up. My shoulders are over my hips. My hips are over my ankles. Good. Hands on your hips if you like, or 
You can try to take a hand right here. Another option, have a uh, long foam roller or a gondola pole or a, a pole that you can use for support. Good? Otherwise, this is the more advanced position for this. Keep your foot extended and point and flex. Woo! Ah! I'm feeling that in my glutes, right? Four, five, six, seven, abs up and in. Eight, nine. Ooh, we gotta work it in. Here's ten. Come back in. Pop it up to a high heel position and press and pull. Here's two. Make sure that all your hips are squared off. So drop that hip slightly if you have to. Good. Here's six. You guessed it. After we do this, we're going to do it to turn out. Make sure that your weight is even on your foot from behind your big toe, behind your baby toe to your heel. Let's squeeze it out for one more. Good. From there, I'm going to bring my foot to turn it, both feet to turned out position. Pilates V position. I still have my foot near the front, leaving my heel under. I'm going to press and pull. I'm rotating my femurs in the hip socket really working my glutes. I feel this strongly in the standing leg of my rotational muscles in my, my glute area. Glute hip. Let's do two more after this one. And then we're going to do the point and flex. So we should be on the ball of our foot. Leaving it out, we're gonna point and flex. Two, three, four. Make sure you're rotating in your carriage leg. Flex it under, bring it back in with control, pop it up to a demi-point position, square your hips up, make sure you don't have one height, and press and resist. Squeeze with your glutes to open and pull. You shouldn't feel any sort of popping motion here. It should be a smooth, fluid movement. Still breathing. Let's do two more here. Hands on your hips if you'd like. And here is 10. Good. From there, we're going to put our weight in our standing leg and float our leg off around to the side. I'm going to come back to parallel. I'm going to put my weight in my left leg, float my right leg around. Whoa, I feel that in my glute. I'm going to separate the middle of my machine with the insides of my feet, press my heel under. I'm on the ball of my foot, press it out and back in. Again, make, your, make sure that your hips are square to your machine and make sure that one hip is not high, higher than the other one. So they're even. They're parallel to the machine and parallel to the ground. Good. If you need some assistance, right here, put shoulders up, back and down. If you would like a gondola pull, a regular pull, a long foam roller, there's the word again, you can have it to the side for support. Leave your foot out and point and flex. Check your hips, check your feet, make sure the weight is evenly distributed. Abs up and in, wrap your ribs. Shoulders over your hips, over your ankles. Drop your heel, bring it in, pop up to a high heel from there. Square your hips, press and resist. Take a look down at your foot, make sure it's parallel. Keep breathing. Nice long neck. Shoulders dropped. Good. Here's nine. Drop your hip if you need to. Here's ten. From there, I'm going to turn out both feet. When I drop my heels under, I want to make sure that the middle of my carriage is split by my heels. The insides of my heels, if they were to kiss, they're splitting the middle of the machine. So I don't have one foot crossed over because when I press out, that hip's going to float across the midline. So I'm going to press out and pull. Your abdominals are supporting a lot of this movement. Adjust your foot as you need to if you see it floating across. You can also bring your arms up to a T for balance. But make sure that you don't allow your, your hip to float forward when you do that. That can be a natural tendency as well. Keep your foot out and point and flex. Point, flex. Three. Equal weight through all three points of your foot that we've been discussing. Wrap your ribs. 
nice long neck. Drop your heel, come back in, high heel position, and 10 more. We're almost there, guys. We're about to go to turn out. And from there, we're going to go ahead and move on to some carriage work. Great? Good. Here's nine. Drop your hips, square them off. And ten. From there, I'm going to bring my foot to the front, rotate to the side. I'm going to walk my foot back so it's square in the middle of my carriage, my standing foot. My uh, carriage foot is going to be to the front of the carriage so I can come with a flat foot. Drop your hips, square them off to the side of the machine, locate your glute and press and pull. Ooh, parallel is not a good position for me. It is not my strongest. Four. Abs up and in. Six. Seven. Again, I have the weight of the carriage right between my big toe and my second toe. All right. We'll leave it out there and point and flex. Whoa! Body, come on, right? We're going to 10. Ah! Seven, eight, nine. Oh, I'm shaking. I hope that you are too and you're really feeling it in a good way. Pop up to a pointed foot. Square off your hips, don't allow your hip to hook this on the carriage, and press and resist. The second side is always the hardest as well. If you think of sideline legs and mat, the second side is always harder than the first side because your stabilizing leg is often the side that's working the hardest in Pilates. Let's do two more. Square your foot, make sure they're all parallel. Good. From there, we're going to turn out to a Pilates feet on our standing leg and on our foot that's on the carriage. I'm on the ball of my foot. My heel's pressing under. And I'm going to press out, dropping my heel under and back. I'm really rotating my femur or my thigh bone in the hip sockets, rotating by squeezing my glutes a little tighter. Keep breathing. Squeeze in on those glutes, drop on those lower abdominals and wrap your ribs. Good. Here's nine. And ten, we're going to press it out and point and flex. Two, three, four. Rotate my glute. Eight, nine, ten. Drop your heel, resist the springs back in. Final set of ten, guys. We're going to come up into a demi point position and press and resist. No popping. Nice fluid movement. Squeezing your glutes on both legs to achieve this movement. Think of standing in side controls. Usually they're at the end of class. You're getting them done now. <laughs> Halfway there. Hands on your hips if you like. Make sure that everything's square. Final one. Place your weight in your standing left leg. Float your foot off to the side. Come around to the side. We're going to sit down. We're going to stretch our right leg first. Floating it up. Bringing above our ankle. Across above our knee. So we're not on any joints here, right? Rest your hand gently. Or rest your forearm gently on your knee. Have equal weight in both of your sits bones. Gently encourage the opening of your hip on your right leg. Go ahead and release that foot down. Float your left leg up. Ooh! Not on any joint. So not on your kneecap, not on your ankle bone, but right above the knee, right above the ankle. We're going to sit straight up. Gently rest our forearm on our left knee. Equal weight in both sits bones. Let's take another nice inhale. Okay, go ahead and release your leg. We're not changing our spring for our curl up work. We're going to be doing curl ups, we're going to be doing lift ups, and then we're going to be doing hundreds. We're also going to be doing a modification of the series of five. We're going to do it all on one red spring. This is going to encourage more abdominal work. 
rather than resistance against the springs to come up. So, I'm going to come down onto my back, locate my handles. I'm going to make sure they're the same length, of course, right? I'm going to shimmy slightly away from the shoulder blocks so I'm not rubbing against them. I'm going to put slight pressure in my straps so that I'm encouraging my shoulders to pull away from my ears, my ribs to wrap. My sacrum is flat on the mat. I'm going to inhale, exhale, and curl up without tugging my tailbone. I'm going to float my hands up, rest my head, neck, and shoulders. Reach my fingertips low and away. Curl up. And lower. And inhale. And exhale. Now I'm going to reach my hands long, and as I curl up, I'm going to extend my legs to working level. Still keeping a nice flat sacrum. I'm going to pull my knees in, lift my hands, rest my head, neck, and shoulders, reach my fingers long. Curl up, creasing over the sternum. Reach my legs up long to my working level. Pull my knees in as I float my hands up. Rest my head, neck, and shoulders. Inhale up. Exhale here. Now begin pumping. We're going to inhale. Two, three, four, five. And exhale. Two, three, four, five. Nice wide collarbone. One continuous inhale on the inhale. One continuous exhale like your foggy glass. So, Wrap your glutes, squeeze your inner thighs, see if you can drop your feet an inch or two. And now inhale, and exhale, two, three, four, five. <sighs> nice long neck, no crunching your chin, your chest. <sighs> One more. <sighs> Draw your knees into tabletop, lift your hands, rest your head, neck, and shoulders. Leaving our knees up at tabletop. We're going to inhale, exhale to curl up, extend our right leg, leaving our foot connected with our leg. We're not swinging our leg down and pull it back in. I'm squeezing my legs towards each other, so they're rubbing against each other the whole time. So I'm getting a nice inner thigh connection. Keep breathing. Crawl a little deeper. Good. And press. And I have my legs in a true table up. I'm not pulling them back too far. I want to continue to work my abdominals. Two more on each side. After this, we'll rest our head and shoulders for just a moment. Good. Unless you'd like to stay up. And you're welcome to. The next one's going to be the double leg extension. When we curl up, we're going to reach our fingertips right up as we extend our legs. Don't bring them behind you. You could, it could be very difficult on your neck to pull everything back in. So inhale, exhale, curl up, legs in tabletop. Extend your arms, extend your legs, and exhale to pull back. Inhale, and exhale. You don't have to allow the carriage to touch the bumper. If it does, that's great. Halfway there. Curl up a little deeper. Wrap your glutes. Squeeze your inner thighs. I don't know about anyone else, but I'm feeling sweaty. <laughs> Bring your hands up. Rest your head, neck, and shoulders. Leave your legs in tabletop if you're able to. And then we're going to inhale. Exhale to curl up. Reach your feet up to the ceiling. I'm going to extend my right leg away, reaching for the foot bar, and it will float it back up. If you're swinging your leg, you're not using your abdominals. It's slow down, slow up, slow down. The hardest part about this is the curl. We're going to go down two, three, four, five, and up. Two, three, four, five, and lower. Two, three, four, five, and up. Two, three, four, five. Curl deeper. Two, three, Four, five, and up. Two, three, four, five. Lower. Now inhale and lower. Reach your fingertips long. Curl up a little deeper. Press into the straps. Flex your feet for the last two, just for a different sensation. As it feels kind of nice. Curl up deeper. Final set. Lower. Two, three, four, five. Hands off the mat. Flat, heavy sacrum. Four, five, knees to table up, hands up, press 
your head, neck, and shoulders. Do not lower your legs. Guys, from there, we're going to bring our feet to a wide frog position. Inhale, exhale to curl, reaching my right hand through my legs, reaching my left arm, the outside of my left leg, and lower. And exhale to curl up. And lower. Squeeze your heels to go ahead and encourage the inner thigh connection. shoulders in. Lower your heels if you'd like a little bit more of a challenge. Make no mistake, while this is a breathing exercise and the movements aren't very crazy, it is a very difficult routine. A lot of ab heavy work. And curl up, creasing up the stream. Final set, leave a space between your chin and your chest. A nice flat sacrum. Float your knees together, draw them to tabletop. Rest your hands down. Take your straps very quickly. Take your feet to the foot of the foot bar. Make them nice and wide. My feet are as wide as my foot bar. And I'm gonna gently windshield wipe my legs from side to side. I'm allowing one hip to gently float off. My 12 ribs are on. It's just a nice release. Take a few moments to just breathe gently. Whew. Right? Roll one foot, come up to sitting. Let's go ahead and drop our headrest. We're going to do a little bit more abdominal arm work here. Pardon me. Told you I was sweating, right? Good. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put my feet through my headrest. If you're more comfortable with your feet crossed, feel free to. When we come back to face in the back again, after we've gone around the world for arms in our machine, flip your legs so the other leg is on top. Make sure you have one hand's width between your tailbone to the end of your machine. We're going to come up. We're having our arms in hug a tree position. Our knuckles are touching. Go ahead and pull the straps. Not so that you pull away from the machine, but so that you don't have any, so this is slack in your ribs. We want no slack in our ribs. From there, we're going to tuck our tail. Pull the machine back. Nice flat wide shoulder blades. I pulled my straps into my where my sternum and my 12th rib meet or where my bra strap, my sports bra strap is. I'm going to pull out to the side, press back gently, and press back. Three, four, five. Squeezing the bottom tips of my shoulder blades. Nine, ten. I'm going to come back to the center, and as I come up. I'm going to release my arms to where they have no slack in the ropes, but they're extended slightly. From there, I'm going to curl up to a 90 degree position with my biceps. I'm going to extend my arms, and I'm going to bicep curl, leaving my, my biceps at that 90 degree position, only moving my forearm, wrapping my ribs. Good. Make sure you're hinged forward not even a hinge for it. Make sure you're sitting straight up and down. I have a gentle hinge myself to release my hip flexors. Okay, and here's 10. Release your arms straight. Come back up into the 90 degree position. Hinge back. Don't hinge back so you're swaying. Don't hinge back so you're tuck. A gentle flat back hinge. We're going to lift our elbows up and dip our elbows down and reach and lower. Don't shrug your shoulders up to your ears. Only straighten your arms as much as you can to keep your shoulders down by your back, down your back. Let's do two more. Bring your arms back up to 90 degrees. Stack your spine straight up to sitting. Peg your straps. Fold over your legs for a moment. Take a couple nice deep breaths here. I'm going to stack my spine up. I'm going to come sitting to face the side of my machine. Again, just like if we put our legs there and stack our legs on top of each other, remember which leg is in front and then flip it for the other side. A trick for me that I like is on my crisscross applesauce, I like to put my leg in front that's closest to the foot bar. So that way when I flip sides, I remember my leg closest to the foot bar is in front. I'm sitting in the center of my machine. If you want to make your uh, springs lighter, but you don't necessarily want to lighten your springs. Scoot all the way 
to your shoulder blocks. I'm going to take my spring in my left hand. I'm squeezing my bicep into my ribs. It's going to be like shave the face movement. My hand is down by my side on my right hand. I reach up and I bend to the side. I'm not crunching down to pull the spring heavier. I'm just, I'm leaving my elbow bent again so that my shoulder can be down my back. And I'm getting my side bent and I come back up and the shave the face movement again. Shave the face with a side bend. Good. This is a true side bend. As if you're between two panes of glass, you can only move, you can't twist. Let's say that. Let's do one more. Good. And now that being said, I'm going to take my strap in my left hand still. I'm going to bring my elbow wide to the side. I'm going to bring my other hand around on the back to reach it. Just rest my right hand on top of my left. I'm going to rotate from here, leaving equal weight on both my sit rows. I'm not going to twist my body or move my body from side to side. I am twisting my body, but I'm not going to bend over like this to get the carriage to move. I'm only rotating to move the carriage. The handle is going to stay directly in front of the center of my body or my sternum the whole time. So, if I can't rotate back far enough to get the carriage to come to the bumper, I'm just going to leave some resistance in the strap. Good. Let's do two more. Shoulders down, sitting straight up and down. And here we go. And you come back. Hold on to the strap still. Come to sitting facing the front. Stretch your legs out long. Find your other handle. Pull up on the muscles on tops of the kneecaps to straighten your legs. Sit straight up. Abdominals up and in. Wrap your ribs. Bring your hands so they're slightly in front of your hips. Float your arms up as if you're serving the platter. Open your arms to the and flip them down. And up through the center. A little circle. Just a nice rotation in our shoulder blades. For those of us with shoulder issues, you can do this movement without straps if you're able to. Good. And inhale up. And exhale down to the hips. And right in front of the hips, right? And now reverse, open to the T, come to the center, and lower. Oh, clearing the table, taking the clutter away. Good. Pull up on the muscles and cross your kneecaps. Nice wide shoulders. Keep breathing. Okay, nice 
strap. I'm going to turn around and face the back of my machine again. Please place the other leg on top if you have a leg on top of your, uh, the other one when you were, had your legs through the uh, headrest block. Go ahead and make sure you have a hand slip between your tailbone to the end of the machine. Hold on to both of your handles. Your uh, knuckles are facing your foot bar. You're sitting straight up, wrapping your ribs, drawing your abdominals up in a nice wide shoulder, shoulder blades. We're going to press down and back in a modified chest expansion. Look to the right, center, don't flare your ribs. Left, center, and release. And press it back. And look left, center, right, center, release. The squeeze as you pull back is not coming from your upper shoulders or trap muscles. It's coming more from the bottom tips of your shoulder blades or the bottom of your angel wings, let's call them. Left, right, release. As you press back, feel as if you're dipping your fingers down in some water on either side of your reformer. Good. Put your back. Left, right, release. And reach it back. And go right, center, left. Center, release. One more. Looking left, center, right, center, release. From there, we're going to hinge forward with a flat back. You'll be looking most likely down at the inside of your reformer towards the back of the inside. I'm going to bring, squeeze my biceps into my ribs, bring my hands up to my shoulders. My uh, knuckles are facing away from me. I'm going to reach back for a tricep press. If your arms are too long, reach them to the side. Shoulders down. Good. Straight line from the tip of your head out through your tailbone. Let's do two more. And 12. Come back up to sitting tall. Go ahead and peg your straps. Good job, guys. We're going to go ahead and move on to a bridge series. If you feel as if you need a sticky mat, we're going to put it on our standing platform. We're not bridging on our foot bar today. So, I'm going to go ahead and grab a sticky mat. Just shave where to place it. Should have done the beginning of class. Sorry about that. I'm going to go ahead and place it. Mm, you might need two for when we separate our feet, or if it's long enough, you can place it in a diamond position so it covers both sides. Otherwise, I'm going to come onto my back. I'm going to make sure that my headrest is still down, guys. Come onto my back. Place my heels on the center. My toes are lifted. We are working primarily from the backs of our legs. This is a heavy hamstring workout. Already, I'm hamstring curling in a neutral spine to keep the carriage in at the bumper. I'm going to platform my arms down by my side, suction cut my shoulder, lace them up. Nice wide collar. But when I do that, I'm going to wrap my ribs to make sure they're not flaring. Tuck my tail and articulate up. I'm looking for a straight line from my knees to my hips to my underarms. And articulate back down. Skull hamstring curling strongly. Tuck my tail and lift. And articulate down. Make sure you're breathing. We're going to come up and stay up. We're going to press out an inch and resist an inch. And out. Squeeze your glutes stronger every time you come in. Good. Five. We have to ten. Six. Make sure you can lift your neck up to make sure you're not on your neck. And now we're going to hold the carriage in as we articulate down. Bring your feet wide to the outside corners in a wide turned out, wide second position or wide Pilates feet position. Still hamstring curling to pull it in. Flat sacrum. Nice neutral spine. Tuck your toe in the lift. Pull it into the machine with a hamstring curl. Articulate down. And tuck your toe in the lift. Good. Articulate down. Let's do one more. Tuck your toe in the lift. Now out an inch and back an inch. Two. Three. Four. Chest. 
Rock gently from side to side. We're gonna roll to one side and come up to sitting. I'm gonna remove my sticky mat. We're gonna do some knee stretches with the foot bar lowered on only a red or a medium spring. I find that when my foot bar is lower, it's easier for me, of course, to find the articulation as I round over, but don't round your shoulders in or round up by your ears. Keep your hands wide on the foot bar, pull it apart so your shoulder blades are nice and flat. Tuck your toes, press your heels against the shoulder block, tuck your tail under, bring your biceps between by your ears, and look in, down at your carriage. Now squeezing your glutes, maintaining your tuck position the whole time, press out and in. Don't lose your tuck. If you feel your tuck start to go, then you've gone too far. This is a slow knee stretch. Really squeeze in the glutes. A lighter spring which allows you to really feel the work. Let's do two more. And one more. We're going to pull the church back into the bumper. Press up into a flat back position. When I'm up in flat back, I'm looking right over my machine, personally. Pull the carriage apart with your shoulder blades. Stand in your flat back, press it out from the flat back, and pull it back in. A lot of glute heavy work here, again. Whichever way you decide to breathe is great, but inhale or exhale on the way out, and then do the opposite on the way in. Wrap your wrists, draw your belly up and in. Have a nice straight line from the tip top of your head out through your tailbone. Let's do two more. Squeezing the glutes strongly, drawing in on our inner thighs. This is great. And come back in. Very good. From here, we're going to go ahead and change our straps. While we're changing our straps here, we're going to go ahead and move the foot bar. So I'm going to change it to two heavy springs in my machine that is too green. I'm going to bring my foot bar back up to the upper position where I normally keep it for exercises. I am going to keep um, my foot bar down, or I'm sorry, my headrest down because we are going to do, be doing some reverse ab curls and I don't want to have to worry about forgetting to put it back down. But if this is hard for you or if it hurts you or if you prefer to have your headrest up, that's fine. After the footwork series, Put your headrest down. So two greens or two me or two heavies. Foot bar up, headrest down, foot straps on. Go ahead and press it out. Press one leg out. Place your foot in. Press that leg out long. Get a foot in. Bring your body into a frog. When you come into the frog, make sure that you're not tucking your tail to get there. Be on a nice, heavy sacrum from tailbone, from back of your hip to back of your hip. Neutral spine, nice flat white shoulder blades. Draw your ribs up and in, press it out to a frog, and pull it back in. Rotating our femur in the hip socket the entire time, just like we did in the opening exercise when we were turned out. And inhale up, and exhale all the air out as you squeeze out your body back in. Here we go. You're doing great. From here, we're going to extend our legs up to the ceiling in a parallel position. You can bring them up as high as you want, but if you're tucking your tail, you need to extend your legs out a little bit further so that you can get a nice, flat sacrum. Otherwise, you're going to have some problems squeezing from your glutes and hamstrings. You press your legs down and float them back up. Now that we have the movement, we're going to flex it down and point it up and flex down. Squeeze the glutes and hamstrings. Good. Go ahead and check on your shoulder blades and your collarbone. Nice long neck. When you bring your legs down, bring them down as far as you can by keeping a neutral spine. If you have to sway up your tailbone to come down any further, you've come down too far for your body today, go ahead and honor your body where it is today. And don't come down as far. Very good. Here's the thing. We're going to float this one up. We're going to turn our legs out to Pilates feet and bring our feet down to working level. From there, we're going to open, put in a nice inner thigh stretch, keeping a nice neutral spine, 
a nice flat heavy sacrum, squeeze with our inner thighs to pull it back in, and open, and close. Now that we have the movement, we're going to point to open, and flex to close. Our feet are coming together in the center at the same time. So we want to work both sides of our legs so that they are touching at the exact same moment. We don't want one leg getting to the center before the other one. Good. We're going to do two more here, and then we're going to go into the Peter Pan. If you're not familiar with the Peter Pan, we'll certainly talk our way through it. Okay? Good. And then we're going to stay with our feet flexed in the center. We're going to point our feet and bring our right foot into a frog and extend our left leg out into the open closed position. Then we're going to flex both feet and they're going to meet back in the center. Bend your left leg in and extend your right leg out into the Peter Pan position. Again, we're in a neutral spine here. We feel a nice inner thigh stretch. We're going to flex it back open. It's like a, it's also called the bow and arrow. Good. And flex to bring it back to center. Bend your right leg, extend your left, and flex your feet back in center. Like you're standing there like your pain, right? And we're going to flat and extend. Let's do two more to each side. They feel really nice. And keep breathing. Don't forget to keep breathing. And extend. From there, we're going to bring our feet back up. To the center. Again, we have a nice flat, heavy sacrum. We're not flaring out in our ribs. We're going to do leg circles in each direction. Our leg circles are now confined to the parameters of our reformer. So we're not going to open our legs too far. We're only going to open them the width of the reformer so we can stay tightly in the muscles and really work out the muscle areas. Really stay contained so we don't knock anything out. So inhale to open and exhale to float back up through the center. And the width of your reformer. You can bring your legs down as low as you want, as long as you don't uh, lose your neutral spine, flare out your back. Just keep breathing. Enjoy the movement. Good. Back from your arms by your side. Nice long neck. This is the final one in this direction. We're going to need to do 10 in the other direction as well. So come back up to the ceiling. And go ahead and reverse, bringing it down and open and float up and squeeze your legs together and down, open, up and squeeze. Good. Grab your wrists. Neck itch, sorry. <laughs> I'm still rotating my femur in the hip socket. We have two more. And we have one more. Good. From here, I'm going to hold on to my straps wherever my legs are. You know, they could be right here with the flat sacrum, but I'm going to try to pull my legs up, keeping my sacrum flat the whole time. We don't want to tuck. We want a nice hamstring stretch. We don't want to flare out our ribs either. We want to keep a neutral spine. From there, I'm going to open my legs wide to the side. Hold up on my straps. Again, it's important to keep a heavy sacrum here. Coming back up to the top, I'm going to bend my legs in a wide butterfly. My feet bounce and my feet are going to touch as if I'm praying. And I can pull my feet up towards me with the foot straps. Unless they have hip problems. And unless I'm doing this exercise. From there, again, this is not one for people with hip problems. I'm going to drop my feet down towards the springs in a nice, wide, open butterfly position. Trying to keep a flat sacrum. Draw your ribs in. It's a nice, active stretch. From there, I'm going to float my feet back up. Bring my feet back to parallel. Take one foot out of the strap. Locate. The foot bar, take my other foot out, locate the foot bar, my other foot, come back in. I'm going to change my springs. So hold on to your straps if you're able to. I'm going to drop one heavy spray. I'm down to one heavy, one green on my machine. 
we're just going to do some light reverse ab curling. So if you put your headrest up, please put your headrest down. Coming back down onto my back. I come back into my foot strap by pressing out, placing one foot in, extending my leg, finding the other foot strap, scoot away from your shoulder box. Come down into a frog. Platform your shoulders by your side. Do not round in on your shoulders here. We're doing this as a nice breathing reverse ab curl exercise. I'm going to platform my arms. I'm going to inhale, exhale, articulate my spine off by lifting my tailbone and lower. I'm not extending my legs to get my, my hips up very high. It's just an, a slight low articulation and release. Inhale and exhale. See if you can do this. Keep it in a nice, wide, open collarbone, pectoral area as much as you can. Dropping my belly twice. Here's nine. Good. I definitely feel the shake. I'm bringing my hips towards my ribs here. Yes. Now I'm going to go take one foot out, find the foot bar, extend that leg, take my other foot out, resist the carriage back into the bumper, peg my straps, come up to sitting. We're going to do a modified star into a mermaid. I'm going to start one green spring on. It is light. If I'm able to, I'm going to stack my knees. Otherwise, if I'm not able to do this, I'm just going to do mermaid this for this whole, uh, this whole side series. So, if I'm able to stack my knees, I'm going to come to right here. This is a lat heavy workout. So, I'm already pulling in with my lats, trying to keep in at the bumper. I'm going to squeeze my glutes and hamstrings, come up to my knees, and come up to a star position. My arms are in a T. I wrap my ribs, drop my belly to my spine, squeezing my glutes forward, and still maintaining a squeeze on my lats. I'm going to float down and rest my arm. Inhale, exhale, and lift. I feel the shake be right here under my arm. And lower. Let's do one more before we go into mermaid. Excellent. Good. And now just to release, we're going to go ahead and press out and reach over the machine and come back up. Hold on to our foot bar, our peg. Reach over. Getting a nice stretch under the underarm that we just worked out. Release our hand back down. We're going to switch to the other side. I'm going to press both of my shins up against the shoulder block. I'm pulling myself in with my lats. Woo! What a way to end the workout, right? Abs up to spine, wrap my ribs, squeeze my glutes, lift my arms up to a T for a nice modified star position. I'm going to lower back down. Keeping the carriage in at the bumper. Keeping my shoulders down. That's the hardest part, guys. Inhale, exhale. Squeeze it up. Nice long neck. Nice wide shoulder blades. Keep it in at the bumper. With your lats, try not to just pull it in with your upper shoulder, right? We want to keep it in by squeezing underneath our arm. One more. Keep it in, 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 in. Squeeze your glutes. Body's one straight line from your <laughs> underarms to your hips to your knees and come back down good final mermaid just stretch it out reach over the footwear and your elbow to come back up and reach into the well come back up go ahead and face the front plant both feet on the floor inhale up exhale floor Separate your feet. Inhale up. Round over. Sweep your hands underneath your legs to either side of your feet. Relax your head, neck, and shoulders. Shake it yes. Shake it no. Take a couple of nice deep breaths. Release your hands. And articulate your spine. Back up to sitting. Thank you so much for joining me for class today. I hope that you guys have a great day. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.